In this episode, I want to talk about nerve problems, specifically neurodegenerative type conditions like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. We're going to talk about some of the causes that you may or may not have heard of and some things that we can do to help improve function and give some of those neurodegenerative patients the best shot at normal. So stick around, stay tuned. So maybe you are worried about Alzheimer's, uh, maybe you have a family history of Alzheimer's and you are doing as much research as you can to help uh, prevent that. Maybe you have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, uh, maybe you have uh, been experiencing some optic neuritis or some of the symptoms that might be associated with MS, or maybe you have a family history of Parkinson's and you want to do everything that you can to uh, protect yourself. Maybe you have a loved one that's been diagnosed and that you are taking care of. So I want to kind of briefly talk about some of the causes and um, really hone in on some things that you might not have heard of before uh, relative to the upper cervical spine. So blood flow is going to be the key. I'm sure if you've been doing any research at all, you've seen information about autoimmune, um, inflammation in the brain and in the neural tissue. But when we're talking about neurodegenerative conditions, so neuro nerve degenerative uh, that break down conditions, why is the nerve tissue uh, becoming inflamed? Why is it degenerating? So these conditions are sort of put in that family, neurodegenerative. So why is this happening in people? There is a lot of different information. I want to focus in mechanically uh, on blood flow in the upper cervical spine. So specifically with MS, you can see some of the research done by Paolo Zamboni. He is a vascular surgeon in Italy, and he's done a lot of research with uh, what he calls a liberation procedure, putting stents into veins to help open up the drainage out of the skull. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today when we're talking about these neurodegenerative conditions. Anytime you hear autoimmune or tissue is degenerating, I think the best question should be why. The body tends to attack tissues when they are damaged or dying. So with MS, there's a really good book by a Dr. Flanagan called The Downside of Upright Posture. And he talks all about the hydraulics of blood in and out of the head. You don't really think about it, but the head is actually an extremity off of the body. So if you have any compression uh, of the blood flow as it either enters or exits the skull, you can see a decrease in the blood flow to the neural tissue. Now, I'm going to go Bible on you, biblical. The life of the flesh is in the blood. If you decrease blood flow to that nerve tissue, to the brain, which is controlling all of the function in the body, what is it going to do over time? It may not be instant, but over time, if you decrease blood flow to the brain, that tissue can degenerate. Just like any part of your body that doesn't receive blood flow, that tissue can degenerate over time and die. Now, what you can see, specifically if you want to talk about MS, is uh, in the watershed areas of the brain and the comparison is to like a river or like a tributary of a river anytime there's a drought a watershed area is the first area that will dry up whenever the uh, drought happens that part of the river or tributary same thing happens in the brain okay so when you look at an MS patient well how do they diagnose MS patients well they look for plaques on an MRI those plaques those areas of dead tissue are in the watershed areas of the brain, the parts of the brain that will uh, be constricted of blood flow when there's decreased blood flow first. So if you want more information on the, you know, the depth of uh, venous congestion and uh, blood flow related to MS and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, I would grab Mike Flanagan's book, The Downside of Upright Posture. I'd like to focus for the rest of the video on talking about the upper cervical spine and how that relates. Whenever the top bones in the neck are misaligned, uh, the actual blood flow that feeds the brain stem runs through the vertebra, the top bones. It's called, they're called the vertebral arteries. Uh, beyond that, the, if you saw a, a cranial angiogram, 
uh, would show the blood flow into the skull, you would see this tree of life. That's going to be fed by the carotid arteries, which run just in front of those top bones in the neck. So if you have any sort of misalignment, you could be looking at less than optimal blood flow uh, in and out of the skull. So whether it's the inability of the jugular veins, which sit right in that bundle as well, because if they're compressed and they can't properly drain the skull, or there's some compression of blood flow into the skull, this is not optimal for the health of your brain tissue over time. So the type of care that we're doing here, we want to open up those bones. We want to get them back in symmetrical alignment underneath the skull so you can see optimal blood flow in and drainage of the blood out of the skull. That gives a patient the best shot at having normal brain tissue function and health. We want to get optimal blood into that area. Along with that, there's an interesting conversation about cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, if you can imagine, the best analogy I can think of is compressing a hose. If you were to compress the hose, the water will jet forward. Um, if you open that up, it sort of drop, dribbles out and like drops out normally. Um, there's really interesting imaging by a Dr. Scott Rosa that shows when the atlas, when the top bone is misaligned, you're going to see compression and jetting uh, of the cerebral spinal flu fluid damaging the brain. So I hope this has helped you understand maybe a slightly different uh, way of thinking about the family of conditions that are neurodegenerative, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and MS, when we're talking about blood flow in and out of the skull. If you would like to see if um, getting these bones checked out and seeing if that's something that can help you, as always, it's no charge to sit down and review your history and see if this is something that can help you. Um, if it's a family member, obviously the same. If you have any other questions besides that, please give us a call or I hope to see you at our next free Dinner with the Doc workshop. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.